Ontario is dealing with a huge fraud problem. Police investigations only lead to convictions a small fraction of the time. So when someone is found guilty, you'd think the victim would feel a sense of justice or closure, but that's not really the case. It's nearly impossible for fraud victims to get all their money back through the criminal court. They have better luck hiring a civil lawyer, but that costs more money. And just because a fraudster is ordered to pay their victim back, doesn't mean that they do. In the last decade, less than a quarter of convicted fraudsters were ordered to pay their victims restitution. And since 2010, fraudsters have been ordered to pay nearly half a billion dollars in Ontario. But unlike some other provinces, Ontario doesn't actually track how much has been paid to victims. The Ministry of the Attorney General told us that's because some offenders repay victims directly, others through the court, and others pay through the province. But the government doesn't actually enforce any of these orders. Instead, it's left entirely up to the victims, who then have to take the case to the civil court on their own or pay for a lawyer to help, all for the chance of just getting the money that they're owed. It's not right. How, how am I supposed to try to make him pay money back? Like the courts, the police, like those are the people in charge, the government. If this was a sentence that he was given, why, why isn't it being followed through with? Karen Smith thought she was investing her money so she could pay off her mortgage a little bit quicker. Instead, the $70,000 of equity she took out of her home went right into the pocket of Daniel Reeve. He was convicted of defrauding Smith and 40 others out of $11 million in total. In 2018, he was given the maximum sentence for his crimes, 14 years, but he only served a fraction of that. And while Smith was working late nights to pay her bills, Reeve was let out on parole. But it was revoked after he was found to be pushing a new pyramid scheme. Still, to the shock of victims like Smith, he was released in 2020 after successfully appealing his sentence and for being given credit for the time he spent in custody while awaiting trial. It, it changed my life completely um, between my ex-husband and I separating, marriage over, change of work completely, went from working in home early in the evening to having to take a full-time night shift position just in order to save my home um, and the emotional toll and being embarrassed. Reeve was ordered to pay Smith and other victims restitution even though the judge said there's no likelihood that would happen and Smith hasn't seen a penny. Just having the onus placed on victims and letting them figure it out themselves is just, it, it's not the way to do it. We're just re-traumatizing victims. In order to, to see how something is working and to really create improvement um, and move forward and, and get more help and support for victims of fraud, I think the first step is to actually figure out what we are dealing with. So um, keeping tabs, having those statistics at hand uh, would, be the, would be huge and it would be the first step. So it's unlikely victims will get their money through the criminal system, but it's at least supposed to deter fraudsters and bring some sort of justice to victims, but that's not really happening either. If victims are looking for punishment, it's usually not that harsh. In the last 10 years, only 32% of people found guilty of fraud had to spend time behind bars. More than half of them were sentenced to a month or less in jail, and just a sliver of them were sentenced to two years or more in prison. If you're intent on a life of fraud, um, deterrence doesn't seem to be much of a, um, an impact. So let's say there is a victim and it has been investigated, person's convicted, restitution's been ordered. What do you usually see after that? Most cases, the money's long gone. So restitution orders um, are rarely an effective way to recover. They simply take too long. And the money is dissipated either on defense lawyers or they just convey their money to third parties. It should start through the civil courts. If we can actually start tracing money and try to freeze assets, 
even before the bandit knows that his gig is up, um, that is the best chance of recovery. But it's expensive to hire a lawyer, and Norman Groot says in Ontario, it's not really worth it unless the person has lost more than $250,000. But there are restitution programs that are working quite well in Canada. Saskatchewan, for example, tracks how much is paid and helps victims get their money. And the feds are looking at a report that recommends the entire country agree on ways to help victims get the restitution that they're owed. Angelina King, CBC News, Toronto. Thank you.